Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, Magic Monday. Welcome to 2020. I know it's been like a month with the holidays and the new year and traveling and everything. Um, there's just a lot going on, but we're back in 2020 and we're approaching a new set of cards which are coming out uh, next week actually. So keep an eye on this channel. We're actually going to be doing something I think kind of unique and interesting for the launch of the new set of cards. And uh, the first Monday after the launch, I think we're going to have a special guest, which is something I'm really excited about. We haven't had any guests on the show yet, but we're going to do something a little special. And we're going to kind of go head to head with some of the new cards. But tonight, I wanted to take a moment and focus on um, one of the most popular decks or more popular decks that's going on in the meta right now. And I'm just going to kind of talk about it while I play it. I'm going to talk about um, the mechanics of it, the key cards, how some of these interactions work together. And we're going to see if it is viable in standard. Now, this is a deck that's reporting somewhere around a 50% to 55% win rate, which for Magic, that's a lot, actually. When you're looking at tournament players winning about 63 to 65% of the games to win a tournament. So, um, this is a pretty highly rated deck. Now, it used to be much higher. There used to be that card, Oko, um, that everybody loved. That was a great card for all the green decks. That's gone. So we're going to play this. This is called the Jund Sacrifice deck. And you might be asking yourself, that's a crazy name. It is. It's a completely made up word, Jund. It actually refers to uh, a set of magic years ago called Shards of Alara. There was these different shards, kind of like in um, the guilds of magic. They all reflected different colors. And there was one shard in particular, uh, the Jund shard, which was black, red, and green. And that shard uh, quickly became one of the more popular shards. In fact, it made playing black, red, and green decks super viable and very powerful in the format to the point where all decks of this style have kind of carried on that name. So if you wonder where these different color combinations of names came from, it's usually older magic sets. I mean, all the guilds of Ravnica came from those Ravnica sets, and you'll hear things like Boros and Simic and Izzet and things like that. So, you'll see here, this is a great uh, look at the starting hand for uh, what a Jun Sacrifice deck looks like. Um, you're, you've got lots of cards that can be sacrificed to some kind of an ability, including food tokens. So, Trail of Crumbs wants me to create food tokens and ditch them. And then you've got Korvold, who is one of the coolest Jund legendary creatures I've seen. He just eats things, and he gets more powerful and draws you more cards as you play him. So I, I really like seeing this in my starting hand. I really like throwing out this Cauldron Familiar right off the bat. Cauldron Familiar can be a really annoying card. See, its ability, it triggers every time it comes into play, and if you sacrifice food, you know, it comes back into play more often. Uh, which I don't have any food right now, but I will get to a place where I have some. For example, playing this Trail of Crumbs. So that gets me my first food token. I could lose the Cauldron Familiar right now and bring it back. But I don't want to. I'd really like to only sacrifice food when I have the extra mana to play Trail of Crumbs. So I don't want to do that yet. Eventually, I might end up with a. Oh, I might end up with a card that actually the Witch's Oven that lets me sacrifice it. I'm actually gonna pay two life to get this out early. This card lets me search for a basic land card. A lot of cards that I have in here require two black mana, so I'm gonna get that out now. Still, I'm not gonna attack. I want to save this familiar to block. He's probably gonna attack with this Runaway Steamkin. I wouldn't be surprised if this was a Cavalcades deck I'm up against, even though he hasn't played Cavalcades yet. He's playing a lot of the key cards that make up that deck. Um, so we'll see what happens. And he's not. So this is what I wanted. I wanted to have enough mana to play Casualties of War. I almost have enough, actually, to play uh, Corvold, too. So I might do that, so... I don't know, let's bring out another red mana. It's good to get him out early, and I can sacrifice my Cauldron Familiar and bring the Cauldron Familiar back over. So I'm going to sacrifice the Cauldron Familiar. It's going to give him a plus one plus one counter and draw me a card. I can bring this Cauldron Familiar back at any time. So let's see what's going on here, what he has to deal with this guy.
He could potentially burn it out. It would cost him two cards. I don't know that he has one single card that can burn this guy down. Um, but worst case scenario, I do have multiples of him in my deck. Well, there's the Cavalcades. I, I kind of saw that coming. But uh, Andrew's in the chat right now, and I know Andrew plays. And some of you, some of you that are watching, might play this more competitively. I don't like putting the Runaways in my Cavalcades deck. This triggers off of creatures with power one or less, and these things automatically power up. It's like a weird thing to put in here. So only that one is going to do damage to me. I think he's trying to goad me into blocking one of these so that he can burn me with his extra mana. I'm not going to do that. So I'm actually going to just take the five because I'm in a pretty good position. I don't want to lose my guy right now. That would be awful. All right, so... I do have the mana now. So... Yeah, I'm not... Yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't put... I don't have the Runaways. I do have a Cavalcades deck. I don't have the Runaways in that deck. So let's see what we've got here. Two lands, unfortunately. I like this one better. I was really hoping for something else. But I'm about to draw another card when he attacks. So why don't I wait and attack first and then see what happens here. Because I have to attack. I have to sacrifice something. We'll sacrifice that cauldron familiar. So I'm getting that power up. All right, this I like. So let's get another... Oh, the Gilded Goose I drew. I like that too. Gilded Goose gives me more blockers and a food token to bring that Cauldron Familiar back. So you're kind of you're kind of seeing here in the first game some of these key interactions. Um, I don't care if he kills it. It's still going to make its food. Which is all I need to bring him back from the dead. And I will pay. There's the Witch's Oven. This was the card I was talking about. Once you get this card out, like... I can just keep sacrificing this Cauldron Familiar. And look at that, another Gilded Goose. So this guy... Corvold's ability to uh, just get permanence and let me draw cards every single time he attacks. Like, that's really strong. Yeah, two Cavalcades out, but he doesn't have a single 1-1 one, one out. I don't really know what he's... Oh, there we go. That is going to have to be dealt with. The Spitfire is kind of a key. It, the Cavalcades will trigger, which will power up the Spitfire, turn it into a giant creature. But he's going to have to sacrifice it to Corvold. He has to block Corvold or he's just dead. So, I don't think it's going to really... I don't know what he's going to planning on doing here. Alright, especially because he's out of mana right now. There's no way he can kill me here. So, I don't know what his plan is going to be. Alright, so, I will obviously block with the, the Cauldron Familiar. Because before he dies... I can sacrifice him. He still counts as blocking. But he's going to go away. And Corvold's going to get his bonus. I'm going to get my card. And then I can even immediately bring him right back. Sacrifice a food. Corvold gets a bonus. I draw a card. And I can pay for that trail of crumbs. And pull a card into my hand. So. I'm not really worried about that. Basically. At this point. he's It's game over for him. Uh, he has no cards in his hand. All he has is this Spitfire, and I'm about to destroy that Spitfire. So, let's just do that. Because Mayhem Devil, which is one of another awesome key cards for the format, whenever I sacrifice anything, I deal one damage. Andrew, I don't know that I can lose at this point. So, first thing I'm going to do is sacrifice the Cauldron Familiar. So, I'm going to do a damage to that from sacrificing it. 
Man, I'm going to sacrifice. Oh, see, he just quit. It was a, it was a no. I've been surprised. Andrew says, it doesn't look like a position. So we just reset the season. I'm back in silver, which is part of the reason I had such an easy time with that deck. I'm used to playing in like the, the gold rank, but every season you drop down and then you have to fight your way back up. And so you can, it's frustrating. I wish I had the time to really dedicate to like really climbing the ranks and doing some like the Grandmaster stuff. Maybe this season, we'll see. So that was about as good as that deck can run. Um, Cavalcades is a pretty easy deck to beat with that though, because I do have the, the Cauldron Familiar that can die and recycle. It doesn't have as easy of time against some of the other meta decks going on right now. So this is not as great of a hand. I have nothing to play except for the Witch's Ovens, but I'm in silver. I'm just gonna keep it and see what happens. I like having Corvold. I like having these jungle hollows that gain me life. Even though I can't actually do anything with them on the first turn. I have four of those cauldron familiars. All I need to do is draw one. And you can start cycling that cauldron familiar. But Corvold is what really makes this deck. Like he is a, a real beast. Uh, do I want to pay life to get this guy out early? Probably, just in case. And they're going to throw down something that has haste, I'm sure. And 3-4 makes it out of range of a lot of the instant spells Red might have. However, they can still burn it down on their turn. We'll see what happens here. But they can sometimes play haste creatures. You know, I'd like to have something that can sit back and, yeah, there's the Lava Coil. But it took two of their three mana just to get rid of it. I'd rather they were Lava Coiling that than like my Murderous Rider or something, so. Uh, let's not do that. I'm actually going to just play out the Murderous Rider. Uh, Pierre's asking, or talking about this game being on Android. <coughs> I think they are working on a mobile version of Arena. I don't know the details. I don't know if it's going to be... Android or not, there is why he did not want my uh, dinosaur out because this thing is annoying. It just keeps making tokens every single turn. This is a fairly uh, newer newer deck uh, that people have been playing lately. I'm still not sure how, how amazingly viable it is, but it's working for people. People are seem to be happy with it. But again, once I get that cauldron familiar out, I'm not super worried anymore. Ouch. And now he can shock my Werner's Rider to death. Or just to strike it. See, here's the cool thing about this deck though, is this this happens, I'm not gonna let him die to the Justice Strike. I'm gonna get my food token out of him. Like why not? The more food tokens I can get, the better. I can use these as food for my dragon later, or I can just use them to keep bringing my black cat familiar back to life. All right, I think I can play Corvold now. He will probably burn him down, but he's going to be wasting a lot to take down one guy. So uh, let's get out my, my red there. Sure, let's play him. And I can eat one of these foods I have left. Fortunately, I don't have any mana left over for Trail of Crumbs, but you know. It is what it is. Oh, see, here's another one of those. Again, I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to eat him first. Always eat him. So I still get to draw the card. That's, which is obviously not what I wanted. What I really want is some of those cauldron familiars. Oh, another one of those outlaws merriments. It's okay. I better get rid of one of them with this casualties of war, but that other one is going to be sitting out there for a minute. So let's do this first. So there's definitely a land to destroy. He definitely has an enchantment and a creature. He has no artifacts. I don't want to destroy an artifact because I'll draw mine or destroy mine. But I love this card. It has so much flexibility. So many different things you can destroy. So, oh, these are the same. It doesn't really matter. I'm definitely blowing up one of the enchantments. And when it comes to land, let's get the one that can do both just because. 
That felt pretty good. Uh, now it feels less good. I should have waited one turn. What's that smell? Oh, it's, you it's possible that I'll draw another one, though. Alright, I need seven mana. One, two, three, four, five, six. This will be seven. I think he'll have a hard time destroying this beanstalk giant. He might have another one of those justice strikes, though. But if he does, nothing I can do about it. Just kind of have to suck those all up until he runs out of them. He only has four. I've got more than four threats. Man, I'm going to have to start eating my food tokens to gain life because I'm getting scarily low. He has a whole... Yeah, see, he does have another one of those justice strikes. Man, he has drawn... Th that's three out of his four justice strikes. That is unbelievable. But I'm over here making a ton of food. Here, I might die. Kira says don't die. There's not a lot you can do to just say, hey, I don't want to die right now. First thing I'm going to do is eat this food because... Oh, here, he's drawn very, very well... Two merriments already and three of the four justice strikes? Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do about that. Um, Murderous Rider is nice to have. Sure. Let's kill this Planeswalker. I'm losing two life to do this. I'm probably going to die in the process. Yeah, I'm going to die no matter what because that's five. If I didn't blow the Planeswalker up, he was going to kill me. Do better. Unfortunately, when somebody has a great draw, and you'll notice I didn't draw a single Cauldron Familiar or uh, Demon, so there was not a lot I could do there. Like I said, that's why decks look at like, you know, you call 50% even. Like, that's not bad. You can't control when somebody's going to draw into their best draw. But you, st you still got to see how the mechanisms of the deck work together, even when I didn't have my actual engine running. And that's kind of the thing about a deck like Jund, is you look for, like, you have these core little smaller engines that all kind of work together. Now, this deck I want to keep. This is actually not a bad starting hand at all. I'm one mana short from the Beanstalk Giant fetching me more. So as long as I draw one mana, I'll be okay. Let's find out what happens. Oh, Witch's Oven. See, that's great, too. So, maybe I will draw some green mana here in a second. Mm. That's fine. I can still play the Cauldron Familiar and the Witch's Oven. So, I already have a little annoying combo. I would have loved to have this going last game if I had drawn this well. So... I'm playing. This is a gate deck I'm up against here, it looks like. He's going to play all these gates, and he's going to play that gate breaker guy. So, now at the end of his turn, I can just leisurely sacrifice these cats forever, and then bring them back by paying the food. I don't have um, any of the, the Mayhem Devil out yet, and unfortunately, since I didn't draw a real land, this land is going to come into play tapped, which is going to set me back just a little bit. Um, I don't have green, so. That's unfortunate, but not only am I doing damage with the Cauldron Familiar, I can just keep attacking him as well and try to chip away at that life just a little bit at a time. Now, I was going to use this Beanstalk Giant to fetch a land, but getting this Cauldron Devil out first is good. Especially when you have something like Karn, who can basically search his uh, sideboard for cards and bring them into play. Which means he can pull exactly what he needs for the situation. Here, he turned this into a creature, but I don't know if he realized that it doesn't untap. Like, it's still tapped. So, I don't know. Anyway. Let's hit this guy up and do some damage to him. That was a weird play from him. Maybe he just had to choose something, I guess. But I really want to chip him down. So I want to 
stop at the end of the turn so I don't forget. Hey, Jeremy Howard, what's up? Welcome to the chat. Great stream yesterday. Thank you for tuning in and watching some Magic Monday. So, and yeah, Pierce says this. So far, this deck is going as advertised. Uh, hopefully, yes. Hopefully, you're seeing a lot of sacrificing. I mean, that is the key to this deck. To casual players or people who aren't familiar with the the way that Magic works, maybe sacrificing your stuff doesn't always sound great. Man, yeah, he's playing a heavy guild deck so far. I've seen the potential of this deck, but it's, it's so rare that it actually works. Jeremy says he's watching Mr. Robot. That's fine, man. Put me on mute. Watch that, Mr. Robot. That show is so good. Evil cannot withstand right. a righteous army. I need to get rid of that guy ASAP so that I can do my stuff. So I think what I'm going to do... I guess I just have to keep attacking him until eventually he breaks down. I cannot use any of these witches, witches ovens right now until he goes away. Close. Down to two. Maybe. Maybe I'll have some luck here. Italian Foot Soldier is great. Uh, that used to actually be an ability. Um... Battalion would let you search for other cards. Pierre's not played the Samurais. Was that Kamigawa? I, that was an older... That, that set's like early 2000s set. <laughs> there is great power so he's got blockers, which is going to make it very difficult to just flat out kill him. And I need six mana for this, which means I can't do anything about it until next turn. However, next turn... That Planeswalker is dead, and I'm using all of my abilities. I don't want to attack. I don't want to do anything. I'm just going to pause and hold. He gets one more turn. <coughs> hopefully, well, hopefully he can't use it for some huge benefit. We'll find out what happens here. All these gates. I don't know what he's going to do with Karn. He has not yet pulled an artifact outside the game. I think he's scared to use that negative two. He doesn't want me to destroy him. But I'm going to. I'm going to wreak havoc with his deck unless he has a counter spell. But I don't think he does. Oh, he's definitely not going to counter spell if he's tapping out all his mana. So basically... Well, that's the creature that's going to die. That's a strong creature. Oh, made that artifact. So I'm going to destroy that artifact, that Planeswalker. I really, really love this card. I really do. So Planeswalker goes, land goes, enchantment. He's got all of the above. So let's get rid of that Chromatic Lantern. Let's get rid of this Amplifier. Um, I don't want him to produce red mana anymore. He, I, he might quit. I've seen people quit in anger at this moment. Nope, looks like he's not. So, I'll talk with my 3-3. He can try to block with his 2-2. I'm not really worried about that. His play space is looking way emptier now. I really like the way this is. I'm not worried about this 1-2-2 guy, Pierre. Compared to what he had before, this is nothing. I can get rid of these battalion soldiers pretty easily, actually. In fact, at the end of his turn, one of them is going to die. So. Because I'm going to sacrifice this. The Mayhem Devil is going to do one damage to the foot soldier. Yeah, now he's quitting. Okay. <coughs> I was going to say, usually people do quit. When you pull off that uh, Casualties of War and wipe their board, people just quit the game. It happens all the time. No one likes to see everything they've built towards be destroyed. However, I've had that happen to me, and you can build back from that. It's not the end of the world. It just kind of brings you back to a more neutral play state. Then again, I don't know what he had in his hand. He might have had a handful of lands or just garbage. So, you never really know. Kingus Khan. 
this is not a great start. In fact, this is one I'm probably going to mulligan. I do have the trail of crumbs early. I'll get the trail of crumbs on turn two. Eh, I'll keep it. I could get that Mayhem Devil out on turn three. I don't love it. But I'm not super worried at this point. If I lose another one, I'm, I'm fine. I actually need to draw into a black mana here in a second. I didn't. Thanks, Pierre. You're so positive all the time. I really appreciate Pierre's positivity. He said, good job blowing that guy out of the water. It Chips were down for a minute until he, like... Ooh, here we go. I will pay two life so I can bring this Mayhem Devil out. Let's see if he has, like, an Essence Scatter or something that can counterspell. I have the feeling I'm up against the annoyingly... Yeah. He's gonna be... Returning everything, counterspelling everything. Fun. This is going to be a fun match, I can already tell you. Look, he's sitting on three mana. He is just waiting for me to play something so he can counterspell it. So what I'm going to do is just not play anything. I know that seems counterproductive because I'm giving him more mana and, like, more to do. But, like, eventually he's going to play something. And that's when I will play something. And the key is to wait until they are tapped out completely. I know, it's not fun to play against a deck like this particular one. Casualties of War is, I don't think it's, an, I don't know that I would say it's an unfair card. It's very expensive and it really hurts somebody when they're, when they're like dominating the play state. It gives you a chance to kind of come back. Yeah, if I play this guy now, anything I play right now is getting hard countered. It's just a waiting game. This is why I don't like blue. <coughs> and they play with flash, so like... If I had a card that played with flash, I could play it right now. I don't. I'm probably dead. The second I sat down and saw him play blue and green on his first play, I was like, I'm probably going to lose this match. And there's really nothing I can do. I can try to draw out a bunch of his counter spells. You see, he's making sure that he always has three left. Now... What I could do, I'm going to sacrifice this for sure. I'm going to try to draw a card. Let's see what I can draw. What I could do is play something that I know he'll counter. And then lead with something that he doesn't counter. But I only have, I don't have a ton of mana here. So if I play the Mayhem Devil, he will counter it. But then he won't have enough mana to counter the Gilded Goose. But the Gilded Goose can't kill the Brazen Borrower. So I am wondering if I could do it the opposite here. So let's see if he counters that Gilded Goose. He didn't. Let's see if he counters this. He has mana. He has three mana right here um, on tap that he's keeping. So he is going to counter that one. Do people counter goose all the time, Andrew? They will counter the goose because they don't like the mana produ like production potential it has. I don't have a witch's oven. This was a bad deck to mulligan. I should have mulliganed this one. Because he's got nothing but mana. Like... I mean, I understand. He's not going to counter it. I get it. That's okay with me. I'm going to keep making food and sacrificing it. I will draw something. Here we go. Cauldron Familiar. Let him counter that. Let him counter the Cauldron Familiar when I play it next turn. I don't want to use the mana here. I don't want to bait counters with the Mayhem Devil. I'm going to bait counters with the Mayhem Devil in a minute. I know, Andrew says I really need to get a Thrashing Dinosaur out, or Thrashing Bronodon. 
I do need that. I need to get rid of... Oh, there's the Wilderness Reclamation. That's what I need to get rid of. But see, he's down to just two cards in his hand. He's down to maybe one card in his hand if he plays a land. He didn't. Yeah, that Wilderness Reclamation has got to go. But I'm really short on mana here. And he's back up to three cards in his hand. So, the game is not over yet. Do not let Andrew's pessimism get to you. But if I play that Thrashing Brada Don right now, it's going to go. However, I can play this Mayhem Devil. He has to counter it. So, there's one counter gone. He does. There's a thing, like, the game will pause to give you a chance to play a counter spell, but if you press spacebar, you can actually, like, skip that pause so it doesn't appear like you have a counter in your hand. It's a whole tricky thing. <coughs> and here I thought my cough was, like, totally gone. Yeah, he's making these soldiers like crazy, and I don't have a witch's oven. Like, this is not a great scenario for me. But Oh, awesome. Alright, he's got one card. Did he really just tap himself out? Or like uh he drew out all of his no cards in his hand. I'm so confused. Oh, because he's going to gain life from these. Smart. Okay. Because he's going to draw a bunch of cards. Man, I cannot. This combo is rough. He's going to counter Massacre Girl. I have to hope that he did not just draw... If he drew two more counter spells, but I don't know if he drew counter spells or not. is annoying. Alright, well, here's one way to find out if he did counter spells. I need him to have not drawn a counter spell here. He had two draws. He got to draw two cards. All oh, right, now he's looking at three more. Just I need him to not draw a counter spell. Is that too much to ask for? Just don't draw a counter spell. All right, he didn't draw a counter spell. Thank goodness. Fortunately, I don't have anything to play to kind of bring that back, but. He was gonna get that card anyway, Andrew. It didn't matter. I needed to get this down to a more reasonable amount of people. And of course he drew another Wilderness Reclamation. But I mean, if I didn't attack then, he wouldn't have gained life, but on his next turn, he would have had one more guy to attack with. He would have gained that life then. Either way, he was going to gain that life. Right now he's gaining three life. Like, he's getting so many cards, I can't really do anything about it anyway. That stupid wilderness reclamation. <laughs> Only that destroying that had stuck. We'll see if he has another counter.
Oh, well, interesting. Does he just not have a counter or he just didn't want to use it? I do, I actually agree with you, Andrew. But I thought if I could get the Wilderness Reclamation to go away, then I could bring out my Bronodon and just destroy the Donna Hope without really having to worry about it. Yes, he's making a bunch of tokens, I get it. I want to get my Master Curl out. If I get Master Curl Girl out there, they all die. Everything dies. I'm honestly surprised that he that this match is still going. He's not playing this deck as well as I think he could have. But that's fine. I mean, he's probably going to play another one of those. No way. Well, four, five, oh, maybe a okay, here. All those cards he's got in his hand. Just everything he has in there is about drawing cards. Unfortunately, there's no way he doesn't have a counter spell in his deck. But I'm going to die if I don't do it, so I'm going to do it. And here comes the counter spell. Like, of course. That's basically, I mean, there's nothing I can do. Uh, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're right. It would bring it down to one, one. Um, it doesn't matter. I knew he was going to encounter it anyway. I don't think there's any winning at this point. So, yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with these counter decks, but they're super annoying. Like, he just gives a handful of counter spells so that you can't play anything. Uh, he only let me play these things because they're not really a threat to his plan. Like, there was no way I'd be able to play anything that was more important than that. And what is Reclamation? I am ready for that g the card to cycle out of the rotation. Like, I'm done playing against Wilderness Reclamation decks. They're annoying. The fact that I went through all that effort to blow up one, and then he just played a second one. <coughs> Pierre says, this looks super boring for him to play. How is he having fun? Well, the truth is, some people just enjoy playing this way. They like making the opponent not be able to play their deck. Like, that's what they enjoy most about playing cards. I'm not saying it's good or smart, so... If I don't block that 10-10, I'm dead. So we're gonna block it. Might as well make a food token, because I'm not doing anything good anyway. Yeah, I mean, Andrew, I'm gonna give it one more draw, but you're right. I mean, that is exactly what's gonna happen. If I don't draw... I'm not sure what I could get here that's going to save me. Oh look, another Wilderness Reclamation. And these trigger independently. So if he still had... Oh, and there's his Dawn of Hope. Yeah, yeah, this is it. There's... Control decks... This one... This control deck that I played against is maybe a little more fun than some. There are literally some that just have you sit there and do nothing like you literally you don't play cards unless they are counter spells that deck actually had some mechanical interactions built into it uh, with that Donna Hope and the Wilderness Reclamation he was able to still play cards and actually like play the game while counter spelling everything wow this is not a great hand but I uh, that's crazy all right this is a much better hand Fortunately, I get to keep six of them. That means Massacre Girl has to go. Super interesting starting hand here. I really like this. I just don't know what he's going to do to come in here and mess, mess up my whole strategy.
No point in attacking with the goose. Oh, well, there goes my mayhem devil. That's unfortunate, but I could draw another one. That would have been great to get that thing out early. But he has nothing else to do, so I'm just gonna bake my own cauldron familiar and then pop him back out with that food token. I could have played it last turn, but I played the. I wanted the cauldron familiar witch's oven combo in play before I played uh, the mayhem devil. So. Sure, that was... I could have. But I did not know that he was going to play Thought Erasure, or that he even had one. I didn't even know what deck he was playing. So, having trying to guess what your opponent's playing is definitely part of the game. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to let him... That, that kind of seems like a waste to get rid of one Gilded Goose. Um, but, hey, teach their own. Hmm. I thought I would be able to play that out of... I guess I couldn't play it back again in response to that happening. Interesting. Uh, for those who don't know, Cry the Canarium gets rid of your graveyard, but I thought I could play that out of my graveyard in response, but I guess not because it all kind of happens at the same time. So. Well, I did have a really good start. And then now everything I had was dead. But that's what happens. It's another control deck. It's just a little... It's a different kind of control deck. Wow, waste... Hey. I'm happy with that. I don't know why he thought I would sit on a card and not play it if I had one in my hand. Like, if I had a card worth playing. That's super weird. Oh my gosh. And here comes my future of drawing lands every turn. Need a trail of crumbs. I've got three food here. I right, so this can only attack if I have uh, seven more cards in my graveyard. I've got two right now. So it cannot attack me. So it's just an idle threat currently. Massacre Girl does nothing for me right now. But he's probably going to discard it out of my hand. Um, well, I could, sure, let's just see what happens. Let's see if he, I don't think he can uh, drown this in the lock. It costs five and I only have two cards in my graveyard. Granted, I can't do anything about that, but. I did play it, Andrew said you should play it. I did play it. He has to keep four more cards in his hand if he wants to block me. So that's kind of a, uh, a reason for him to keep cards in his hand. I know what he's got in there. I'm sure he's got some Drown in the Locks. I'm sure he's got those Thought Spectres that can steal cards out of my deck. But if he plays anything, he can't block. So he's just basically giving me... I mean, he can't block anyway. Like, none, neither of these can block. Um, but even, you know what, why not? Oh, there we go. Okay. Wow, nice. Nice mill. Doesn't matter. I mean... I've still got five. He's only, well, I guess I do have seven cards in my discard pile now. Dang, that filled up fast. And there's no way, I, nothing I can do to get any of these out of here. That's painful. And he's got a full... Man, I'm just drawing land after land. How irritating. 
If he plays another drown in the lock, I'm probably dead. I don't know what he's got. A oh, murderous rider. What? Yeah, I mean, that's basically game, considering I've drawn, what, five lands in a row? I'm probably going to draw another one. I guess Andrew was right. I shouldn't have tried to play that Murderer's Rider, but I did not see that thought. Uh, what was, which one was it? Didn't say please. I did not see that coming. That was very unfortunate. When something like that happens, what are you going to do about it? You just suck it up. Anything I play now, he's probably going to counter. Again, how do I get this luck of going against two counter decks in a row? All right, well, I can try this. <coughs> Hopefully I can draw something that's going to save me. Yeah, I mean, that's not going to save me. Great, he countered it. Now he can't do anything about it, but it's too late in the game. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing I was going to be able to do against this guy anyway. I had a great start, but control decks are control decks. It's, you just have to take it. My control decks don't lose very often either so I get it that's how I climbed all the way to gold last season as, as, as bad as I felt doing it um, I climbed all the way to the top using control decks it also depends on the draw you get he had some great cards right off the bat um, so did I but his were better so we'll see We'll see if I can turn this night around. I mean, I've had some good wins tonight. I've had some snowball wins. And I've lost the two control decks. This deck is very susceptible to control decks. However, I get the whole point of the talk was about how this deck fits into the meta. And it does really, really well against Cavalcade decks. Uh, which is one of the most popular decks right now anyway. Um, it's really strong against that. It's really strong against the, the gate decks. Any kind of creature-based deck, um, I think this deck is going to do really well on. Because you could just block... Oh, is this like a mirror? Am I doing like a mirror match? I don't understand. Interesting. What a... I thought about this Footlight Fiend in my deck here, but at the end of the day, it just didn't feel right for what I was trying to do. Um, because you, you get the extra damage out of him when you sacrifice him, but then he's gone. Like, you don't bring him back as easily. And I can play my Mayhem Devils soon, but I have nothing to sacrifice the Witches of. Irritating. Yeah, too damage. Three mayhem devils, and still with nothing to sacrifice. Well, it is what it is, I guess. Until I can draw something, anything to sacrifice, at least he can serve as a blocker. Yeah, I don't know why he did that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oops. And he's going to do one damage back to me, but... So, Pierre saying, give me props for not knowing what decks you're going to be playing every night. That's kind of the deal. When you're playing standard, um, usually traditionally, like in a tournament scene, it's best of three. So, you go into the first deck, you have no idea uh, what you're up against. But then by the second, you know, then you play again, and you're like, okay, you already know what to expect. You have a, both have a little bit of an advantage going into that second game. Again, nothing to um, 
something to sacrifice. Worst case scenario, I can sacrifice my own mayhem devil. But I don't want to do that. The funny thing is, if he tries to sacrifice anything... Ooh, that Judith is going to have to go. I don't have Judith in this deck. Precisely because I have the Mayhem Devils I like better. But it's it's a good answer. So if I block this, it's going to kill me. If I block that, it's going to kill me. So I'll just take four. I mean, I don't want to lose one of my Mayhem Devils already. Not when I could draw something that's really going to help me out here. And I didn't. I drew another land. This is not going great. All these lands, just land after land after land. I don't know why. So this turn I'm going to have to start blocking. And unfortunately with Judith out, it's going to make everything a little bit more difficult. So everything I block with is going to die here. Which is unfortunate. But I think I can kill Judith. Yeah, I'm going to have to do it. I don't know what he's thinking over there. He's planning something. I wish I had one food token to sacrifice right now. If I could eat one food token. Ugh. But next turn I'm going to have the Beanstalk Giant out. So I can deal with just having two Mayhem Devils. As frustrating as that is, I'm definitely going to block the big dude. But I'm not actually going to block it. I'm going to let my Mayhem Devil die. Um, okay, but guess what? I'm sacrificing him anyway. To do one damage to that, one damage to that. And one damage to the Cauldron for me. So, he's doing his damage back. He's really taking his time and thinking about how he's going to do his damage, but he's going to do some damage here in a second. Oh, he's doing it to me directly. I think he realized he can't kill my Mayhem Devil. Because he's only going to do the two damage. And that's going to reset those both down to lower level creatures. However, I'm still going to take, and I get my food token. So actually, if I eat this food now, I can still kill, I can just kill the fiend. Is that worth it, or is it worth it? I'll take the one damage anyway. And I want to save that food. Here we go, this will help. One damage to that, and one damage to him. I really like these Mayhem Devils. But I'm, I'm on the low end here. He's going to deal one damage back to me. Like, I am really hurting. But I think that's okay. I'll eat next turn. I'm going to, I want to get this big guy out first. Because if I sacrifice this guy for food, he makes extra food, which is nice. Alright, we'll see what he's got up his sleeves here. If he sacrifices that food to bring Cauldron Familiar back, anything he sacrifices at this point, I'm doing... Oh, he got one too. This is going to be an interesting game now. We're all doing damage back and forth to each other every time we sacrifice anything. That was a weird attack. So he's going to do one damage or something.
Now he cannot bring his cauldron familiar back, or I will finish off that devil. Which is probably what he wants. Like, or he probably didn't expect that. Um, oh look, another one. Alright, so this is a good time to eat my food. He's gonna get to do a damage to something. But just one damage. And then he's gonna die. Which is exactly what I need to happen here. I already did three to him, so. A lot of cards on the stack right now. All right. A lot of cards on the stack. Now he has to block here, or it's game for him. It still might be game for him. That was. That was dumb. I don't know what he's thinking. In fact, I think that I could just kill him right now. By loading up a bunch of these mayhem devils. Yeah. And she says this guy is not good. So, yeah, I mean, when you're playing in silver, I don't know, like, I was playing it high gold last season and it dropped me to the very tip of silver into gold for this season and I haven't played much this season because the holidays and everything um all right that's 958 I'm gonna play one more and then I'm gonna open those packs I think mean, you guys want to stick around stick around so there's not really a firm hour I just don't like to go too long I don't want to keep guys forever I'm gonna do one more I really like this deck I don't know if you guys can, this is this is a fun deck to play. There's a lot going on and a lot of different creature interactions here. Whoa, look at this hand. I'm not, I'm not keeping that. This is better. I could get this guy out pretty quick, but I don't know, maybe not. 20, Andrew says 24 hours straight of magic. Maybe for like extra life or something, we could do like a 24 hour magic marathon. Everyone kind of switches off what they're gonna do. Um, I think mean, that would be super interesting. All right, I'm gonna get some blue deck. You guys said one more, watch it be control deck. Watch it be another flash deck or another Simic. Oh no, it's blue red, so awesome. I wanna say improbable alliance. Um, which is like the fairy deck about drawing cards and making a crap ton of fairy tokens. <coughs> Luckily, I have cards that can deal with that, like Murder Girl. So, we'll see. Unfortunately, he can easily just burn that Gilded Goose out of existence, and I won't get that mana uh, capability. I'm going to keep my Murderous Rider in uh, standby. He's probably going to play some Planeswalkers. There's definitely the uh, the Royal Scions, which are annoying in this deck. Is he searching for a shock or something? I don't know what he's searching for. All of his spells right now cost less, which is really good for him. Um, I'll let it... I, that was a tough decision. If I had let that come into play untapped, I would have lost two, but I would have played the Trail of Crumbs. Six and one, half dozen in the other, I think. What is he thinking about? If he has a shock, shock it. You only have one target. It's the Gilded Goose. Like, either he shocks or he doesn't shock. I don't know what's, what he's thinking about. Should have brought a book of poetry. There is actually a guy online um, who plays magic, and when when 
people do this when they delay the game. He literally reads poetry out loud. I thought that was brilliant. I just said, this guy is the ultimate troll. Like, he knows people are just, you're just doing this, like, just to waste my time. Uh, somebody gave a pretty good uh, breakdown of how to play against the control deck. They said, just bring a book. I thought that was kind of funny. I'm not reading poems. If I can remember the guy's YouTube channel, I would mention it because we're all in this together. Look, Crackling Drake. That is the thing that I can murder his ride. That is for sure. Otherwise, that is going to get really annoying really fast. Oh, he, doesn't, he knows I don't want to kill my dudes. He's right. So, let's murder it. Yeah, are you writing poetry for us there in the comments? I like it. I'd like this more if I had some mana. He's gonna play something like Niv Mizzet or some something crazy. We'll see. He hasn't played Improbable Alliance yet, or the Pyromancer. Luckily, I think I'm kind of immune to the Pyromancer. Like, he can kill my geese. Oh my gosh, another Crackling Drake. Crackling Drake gets more powerful the more spells he has in his graveyard. And so he keeps playing spells. Obviously, I can block... I'm not going to block the Electromancer. I can't kill it. All I'm doing is using a goose. Um... Well, this will stop it from attacking on the ground. I can't do anything about that crackling drake coming at me, though. That is until he just, like, kills this murderous rider with some direct damage here. Which can easily happen. I'm honestly on my heels right now. I don't know... I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to play... Like, I'm just going to have to hope that he gets a bad draw. Um, so far he hasn't gotten out any of his engine building. Like, he's got that Crackling Drake, which is going to get really strong and be really annoying. Um, but I can lose a Gilded Goose for that. I will lose a Gilded Goose to stop six damage from coming through. Or eight damage as it is now. And there's the Pyromancer. That thing is a pain in the butt. Three damage every time he draws two cards in one turn. And he's going to play something probably, well, it's whenever he draws the second card he's turn. So he already did drew his second card. So I, I don't know if he thought Pyromancer was going to trigger there. Um, Alright, so this time I'm seriously going to block with the Goose. I am going to Witch's Oven it. Because why not? It still blocks. I'm not dead yet. I still have plenty of options. I can come out of this. I can survive this. Yeah, I know I can't kill her. I just wanted the extra two extra life there. Yeah, it just depends on what he gets here. I mean, he, he's going to do three damage right now. He's probably going to kill my goose so that this thing can come ahead and get me for nine. But even then, depending on what I draw, oh, he's going to shock the goose. Um... Because it doesn't matter which one I use the oven on. Because as soon as he draws a card, he's going to do three damage to the Pyromancer. He's got a good deck here. Like, not a lot I can do about it. 
Not when my draw was so poor. Because he's doing three damage every single turn now. Because he can draw two cards every single turn. So you get all these jump starts. All these jump starts sitting up here in his discard pile. I'm at two health. Like, there's really nothing I can do. Oh, and now he's gonna shock me. Who told me to stay and play one more game? I think that was Andrew. It's okay. I will switch back to my other deck and I will fight my way back up to gold. And we'll have maybe a more interesting match. So let's open some packs. So, you'll notice I already have some packs for Theros Beyond Death, which is the new season that comes out, I believe, the end of this week, start of next week sometime over this weekend. I will finally be able to open these three packs and uh, probably do some drafting and some other cool things to get familiar with the new set. We're going to do, a, like I said, a special show all about this new set with a special guest. We're going to talk about... The cards that we think are going to affect the meta, we're going to play some games with some of the new cards. It's going to be a lot of fun, so definitely don't miss next week. I'm going to open this Throne of Eldrin pack and hope I got something good. We'll see. Charming Prince. I will never play him. Though I do see some decks use him to a great uh, effect. So, Alright guys, thank you for watching. That was the first uh, first Magic Monday of the new year so tune in next week we will have some beyond Theros stuff and again uh check social media because we will be announcing who that special guest is sometime in the next week once we get it finalized so bye guys and i will see you all next monday